Hello everyone. Previously, I covered how to set up and configure log shipping in SQL Server 2012. Today, I'll go over how to reverse log shipping so that the primary database becomes the secondary and the secondary database becomes the primary. And I'm going to show you how to do it in a way that you don't need to take a full backup. This technique is useful when you have a very large database and when the primary and secondary servers are located far apart. For admins that have set up log shipping before, you know that the step that usually takes up the most time is the initialization, getting that full backup onto the secondary server and restoring it. For example, if the primary server is located in New York and the secondary server is located somewhere in Europe, it can take several hours just to back up the large database, copy it onto the secondary server, and restore it there. I'll show you how to reverse log shipping without having to do that. Here I have two servers. On the default instance, this is my primary server with the test DB1 primary database being log shipped onto the second server. So what we're going to do here is we're going to reverse the roles of these two databases, making this one the primary database and which will log ship to here and making this our secondary database. So to do that, first we need to disable the job that backs up the transaction log on the primary server. Once we do that, we go to the secondary server and first run the copy job to copy any remaining transaction log backups from the primary server onto the secondary server. Then run the restore job to restore those remaining transaction log backups. After those jobs run, we can disable those jobs. So now all the log shipping jobs are disabled. And we know that the secondary database is up to date, up to the last transaction log backup from the primary database. So now let's create one more transaction log backup on the primary server. And this time, when we take the backup, we're also going to set the primary database to no recovery mode. This way, we know that there will be no more changes to the primary database after the log backup finishes. Setting it to no recovery also leaves the primary database in a state that is ready to restore transaction log backups. So we're on the primary server and Let's back up, take one last backup of the log. And when we take this log backup, we need to set the database to no recovery. Okay. Now if you refresh the primary server, you'll see that testdb1 is now in a restoring state. Now let's go on to the secondary server and restore that last transaction log backup that we just took and this time when we restore it we're going to recover the database and bring it back online
And to bring it back online, the command we use is with recovery. So the database on the secondary server, if we refresh it, is back online. So at this point, we know that these two databases have the exact same data. Now we could go on and set up block shipping from what is now our primary database to the secondary database. And since the database on the secondary server is already initialized, we don't need to take a full backup of our primary database to restore onto the secondary. We can skip that step and just configure the lock shipping settings. So that's the backup share, and this is the physical backup location. And now to add a secondary database, which is now the default instance. that database is already initialized. Again, we could set this to either no recovery or standby. And with standby, it will leave the database in read-only mode. OK, so now that created the SQL agent jobs. If we take a look on the primary server now, or the default instance, which is now the secondary server, here was the original backup that we disabled. We can just go ahead and delete that. You see that now, since this is the secondary server, it has the copy job and the restore job. And now if we go to the name instance, SQL1, that used to be the secondary server, it used to have the copy job and the restore job. Now if we refresh, we'll see that it has the backup job. So we could go ahead and delete those copy and restore jobs. We won't need those anymore. And now to test, let's go on to our name instance, which is our primary server now. There's currently three records in there. Now let's make a change and delete one of the records. So now there's only two records. Instead of waiting for the schedule to kick off, I'm just going to run this manually. So first, back up the transaction log on the primary database. Next, copy that back up onto the secondary location, secondary server. And then restore that transaction log back up.
Now once this is done, since we configured log shipping to set the database to be in standby mode, when we refresh this, it should change it to standby and it does. So now let's go to this secondary server, connect to our secondary database, and when we query this, we should only see two records. And we do. So now the log shipping roles are reversed. This used to be the primary server, this was the secondary, now this is the primary, and this is the secondary. And we didn't have to perform a full backup and initialization.